Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Vortex Mike back again for my uh, finalized version of the cloner that I've been building. The other one was called the Mr. Cloner. Um, this one I just dropped the cloner and just went with Mr. Clone 2020 due to the fact that it is a 20 site cloner. Um, and I'm going to show you how this cloner differs from other cloners. It is a high pressure system cloner. So what that means is it operates at higher pressure than your typical 500 per gallon per hour pump that uh, just moves water, moves large amounts of water within an hour. Um, this one, this pump moves smaller amounts of water, but it moves higher pressure water. Um, basically, the reason why it's called Mr. Clone 20 is the name I changed it to due to the fact that it is a mist driven cloner. Um, I don't know if you can see, but inside of there, um, I'm gonna open it up for you in a second, but inside of there, there are uh, mister heads that require higher pressures to operate properly. Um, so let me just show you some of the different things that I did to this one then in my last video. Uh, I used to have the, the intake, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, not the intake, the, the delivery line going in to this bulkhead here. And it was connected to a straight inline water manifold that was spraying the water up um, through brass mister heads. I removed the brass mister heads and used plastic ones instead. Um, and it used to, the bulkhead here is capped off. The only reason this bulkhead is here and I have another one on this side is purely to keep that manifold that's in there suspended through across the air inside of there to deliver even amount of dispersion through the top of uh, the underneath of the top part of the container, the lid. Um, so as you see, I don't know if you can see in here, but I'm gonna open up for you in a second, but just about the things on the outside, you still have your thermometer, which is right now it's at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you have these three bulkhead fittings in the back. The black bulkhead fitting is the delivery line, which actually the water comes out pressurized through the pump into the black bulkhead, into the barb that's connected to that T there, that's connected to the water manifold that pushes that pressurized water through the entire manifold that's inside of there, uh, operating the misters. This middle bulkhead fitting is my suction line. This is a recirculating uh, cloner system. Um, so basically, I'm drawing the water. I don't know if you can see the water line down there. It's about two inches. I'm sure you can see it there. It's about two inches and inside of there, there's a bar that's connected to a, a line with a filter on it that sucks the water in and keeps any large debris from coming through the hose, damaging my diaphragm pump. Um, so yes, that's my suction line and it comes back into the pump, non-pressurized, pressurized, and then it gets pressurized in the pump, comes back out, goes into the delivery line right there, which is the black bulkhead. This far left bulkhead, basically right now is capped off. Um, it's an auxiliary bulkhead, just in case somebody wants to connect an air pump to it if they really want to. They don't really need to, but if they want to, it's there, or for whatever other application they decide to you, you know feel fit to use, it's there for their disposal. All right, so right now it's capped off. I'm not using it as of right now. Um, as you can see, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll see I take a lot of pride in the things that I put together. I like to make things look nice. Um, my wife always pressures me about why am I doing this, why am I doing that, but she doesn't understand craftsmanship is craftsmanship. All right, um, things are labeled. This is hard plastic. Um, if anybody wants to know exactly how I put this whole thing together, all you gotta do is subscribe, uh, send me a message, and uh, or leave a comment and everything, and I'll get to you on that. Um, and here is the pump. I believe what it is is a 25 or 35 uh, PSI diaphragm pump. Um, basically, if you look close, you can see that arrow right there. That's where the water comes in on this side and it exits to this side. I have my quick couplings uh, quick release, quick connect, and uh, makes this system easy for you to take apart. You can simply disconnect it from the cloner here and move things around, uh, change water, do whatever you need to do.
all right? Um, this pump is small, so and but powerful, so it doesn't get hot very fast. It takes about 20 minutes for it to actually start to heat up, but usually if you leave a cycle on 10 minutes on, on 30 minutes off, it'll be completely cooled down by the time you, by the time it kicks back on, if you have it set on the timer. Um, I did some wiring inside of the box. I took this connector here from some piece of um, old modem that I had. Um, the reason why I did that is because those spade connectors that are connected to the motor inside of there, the positive and negative, every time I would use those and disconnect directly, I used to have them connected direct to the line, but they were always, you know, I don't know if my crimpers weren't working right, but they will always detach. So I did it that way. That way I never have to touch those connectors and I have it soldered here to the to the leads of this, this uh, piece here, which now I got that signal there and I could go on and just set everything up, set it up to my power supply and pump and, and into the wall there. And I have everything set on a switch. Now you may be looking, people say, you know, that is an 18 volt pump, but that is a 110, you know, socket or whatever the case. Um, that's not a bug. It's actually a piece of plastic bag or something on the floor. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It's, it's Teflon tape. It's waterline seal Teflon tape that I just didn't throw away. I don't know how I got on the floor, but. Um, so yeah, so basically 110 comes into that 19 volt, well, 19 volt power supply. Oh, I dropped my, I dropped my, uh, my switch and it came on. Switch hit the floor and actually turned on. But um, anyway, uh, so yeah, so I actually tested that with a multimeter and it's only putting out about 18.7 or something volts at the highest um, and at the lowest like 17 something. Uh, and that's an 18 volt pump, so it's fine. If you're within about a half of, of a volt, you should be good. It's not gonna blow anything up. But I did one time accidentally plug my other pump into, directly into that wall, 18 volt. You know, had 110 volts coming into it. Wasn't for a good day. It actually fried the pump. Um, so don't do that. I didn't do it on purpose. I got the plug mixed. I wasn't paying attention, and I plugged it in funky. But uh, but yeah. So um, I'll show you a closer look on the inside. It's gonna drip a little bit. So if you see water splash, you know, water drips around the table. It's not, the system's not leaking. It's just when the switch just fell down and turned itself on, when it hit the ground, it turned on. And obviously the underneath part of this lid is wet now because the misters were activated when it did that. But I'm, I'm not gonna actually take this whole thing off. I'm gonna just leave it here and do it this way. You can see the manifold. Um, you can see where it comes in at. You can see the suction line there. And that's um, at the bottom of the tank, and it's still, it's about an inch of water that's still coming over the top of it, um, where it's suspended at from those two bulkheads. Everything in here is sealed. You're not gonna get any leaks. You have the node for the thermometer that's just coming on in. Um, now, I managed to solve a problem that a lot of people that build cloners come across. They come across a problem where they, if you notice, most cloners they have. The lip of them, it has an inset and it has a ledge on the inside. And the cloner lid usually just sits on that ledge and it keeps it not water sealed container. It's water, it's leak proof, you know, for the most part, as long as you don't turn it upside down or whatever. And this is the same way, um, but I think the way those look are pretty much retarded. And they're made out of very cheap plastic um, and they want to charge you 300 something dollars for something that's that that you don't have to pay that much money for. Um, so as you can see on this one, that's pretty thick. That is about, I would say three eighths of an inch thick and that's solid food grade uh, plastic. Um, I'll tell you guys how, if, if somebody, like I said, drop me a line and I'll show you guys and explain to you how I did that, how I built it. Um, if you are gonna build one of these, you're gonna need some tools if you want it to look nice. Um, you're gonna need a router and things of that nature. If you have that, then you're, you'll be good to go. Um, and the key I find to everything, to mass producing certain things, is to make templates like this lid here. I made it, I, I took a piece of very thin wood, which allowed me to fine tune it very fast, and I don't have to 
do a whole lot of cutting and sanding. You know, the thinner that piece of wood was, the easier it was for me to sand because it just wasn't, I don't know, it just wasn't strong enough to st uh, stand against the sandpaper, I guess, and I can sand a lot down a lot faster. And once I made that template as perfect as I can get it, now I take my actual material, glue it on the top of, the, of, of, of my, glue the template on the top of my material with some low tack spray adhesive, just enough to where you just need it to stick there before you use your router. And then once you're done, you just can peel it off and it's not gonna be no, you know, don't use nothing crazy like, uh, like contact cement and leave it on there for like a day because you're not gonna take, you're not gonna be able to get it off. Use something very light, like for light fabrics or arts and crafts or something like that. And then you clean it off with a little bit of acetone or something when you're done and it'll get all the, uh, it'll get the, the sticky residue off of your, off of your medium that you're using. Um, I went with the lime green colors just because I wanted it to look this way. Went and got to my local hydroponic shop, not too far from here and got lime green uh, clone inserts, cloning collars. Um, so once I, once I actually flip this on, um, it doesn't leak whatsoever. I don't even have to cut a notch. Like I said, I don't even have to cut a notch. Don't have to use any kind of gaskets up here, up top, anything. There's no kind of rubber gaskets or anything like that that's going on up here. You don't got to worry about that. You don't got to worry about some gasket getting water on it and then it becoming, you know, not sticky. If it's some kind of sticky gasket or whatever, it's not gonna, it's not gonna matter. Um, there's no water that actually that leaks from this thing whatsoever. You can just leave it there. You don't have to worry about leaving somewhere, coming back, and then you have leaks. Um, basically, yeah, and that's it right there. I mean, I'm gonna turn it on. I've, it, the misters are cross misting system where the ones on the right, there's two on the right, two on the left, and two in the center of the manifold. And the two on the right are uh, at 45 degrees going across the tank, and the other two on the left are 45 degrees going across the tank, and the two in the middle are going straight up. So it gets maximum coverage on the underneath the bottom of the setup as you can see there you know those misters on the on the the misters on the left at 45 degrees they they hit both rows of these hard ones on the right the ones on the right at 45 degrees hit both rows of these ones right here on the left and the center ones hit those ones in the center so I'm gonna kick it on and uh, show you um, it's gonna be hard for you to see the mist because I don't want to take off the lid and get water everywhere so uh but yeah here we go you'll see that the all those you see the amount of water that is delivering with those uh droplets coming down off the sides um, as you can see i'm telling you this thing works better than any any uh
so a lot of the corners you see the, the, the pump sits down inside of the inside of the water and here you don't have to worry about it the pump doesn't sit down the side of the water so it's not sitting in there and as it's operating it's not getting your water it's not heating your water up at all um, basically it the amount of time that this that the water spins going through that pump is I don't know maybe not even half a second and uh, it is back out so it's a very low capacity for heating up going through that pump this water stays cool for a very long time um, especially if you have it on a system that's about 10 minutes on 30 minutes off or whatever the case then your water is going to always stay cool as long as the ambient temperature and the environment that you have your uh, cloner sitting in is uh, at the desired temperature if, this, if the ambient temperature is 75 degrees and you have it in a 75 degree room then it's going to stay at 75 degrees or less if you have it on a proper interval cycle um, and uh, yeah but the diaphragm pump also is not water submersible so you definitely don't want to put it in there unless you want to let you get yourself and die so i wouldn't recommend anyone going out trying to buy one of these things thinking they can put it down inside of a tank because you will blow yourself well i'm sorry you will you know fry your pump and probably fry yourself uh, but with that being said as you can see at the top there's no leaking no water coming out nothing not even on the side it's good it's good it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Alright, so you can leave that for days. Days. I'm gonna come back and check it and it's gonna be just fine because we're cutting right in there. Alright, so if you like it, comment, um, subscribe, give me thumbs down if you don't like it, but trust me, I if you do, if you do not like it, please leave a comment and explain to me uh, uh, the reasoning. Um, you know, it's just a good taste to do that instead of, you know, I always have, I have somebody that's subscribed to my channel for some reason, they just keep giving me thumbs down, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why, uh, and they don't leave a comment about it, so, you know, pretty shady, but it, it's all good, um, you know, just, if, you, if, if you're out there watching this video, just don't hate, congratulate, and uh, if you're just here to hate, then just please get off my channel. But, like I said, you know, please leave me the feedback. If you don't like it, at least let me know why in a comment, uh, in a comment or something of that nature. All right? This is Vortex Mike. I'm out of here. 